All right, today we're working on TAM 7 train air handler. And every time the unit starts up, the suction pressure drops all the way down. And then the unit shuts off on low pressure. And this is because the electronic valve is closing automatically. So this one has two versions. This is a five wire, and then there's also a six wire. I'll put up a picture in a minute. Uh, first, you wanna have a few things to test. So this right here is the open and test and close test for the motor. If you have your gauges hooked up, you can see if it's actually opening and closing, even though you can sometimes feel it. These two are your sensors for your coil temp and your line temp sensor. We'll have to test those as well. And then on this one right now, first we're going to start with filming it out. So you got to trace the wiring. This is one plug and it loops and goes down to this plug. But in the end, this is where it goes into the board. So I'm going to test here first. On the five wire version like I have, brown is your common. And then you need an ohm blue to brown, orange to brown, yellow to brown, and white to brown. They should all be around 46 ohms. If they're not, then you have an issue with the motor. If you have the six wire version, you're gonna wanna do brown to yellow, brown to blue, red to orange, and red to white. And I know there's six wires here, but what you're looking at is actually right on the plug here. So one, two, three, four, five that goes into an adapter which takes it to this. So if you have the six wire, you'd be using the red and the brown as your commons to test them out. And I'll put that picture up as well. If all those ohm out okay, that usually means the motor is good. Your next thing is to pop this whole motor off. It just slides right out. You want to see if it's all rusted up. This one has a little bit, but it's not terrible. Just snaps back into place. Alright, once you've done that, that kind of confirms that the stepper motor should be in good shape, so we're also going to want to test the sensors next. This is one of the cheat sheets I have here. So, the orange leads is the evaporator coil temperature. So, we have to do DC voltage and we have to do K ohms. So, this is the chart you're looking for for temperatures. So in my case, I know my coil's in that 30 to 33-ish degree range. Right now, since it's running, and I have the separate motor actually forced open at the moment. So when I do ET, so I'm gonna check the orange right here. At J3. Right here, J3 sets 2.7 volt DC. And if we find the 2.7, we're looking at 30, 32, 33 degrees, so that's pretty normal. If we had way higher or way lower, we'd know that that temperature sensor is reading wrong. Then this is the line temp one. This one's always going to be a little bit higher unless the unit's off. Now this is 2.12, so right at 2.2 roughly, so right in here. So I mean, their line temp's right around 49 to 50 degrees. So if your unit was off, they would, and it's been off for a while, these shoes should be the same. And this is with the power on. Your next step is to unplug these sensors, just one snap. And then you're going to ohm it out on the bottom to make sure that the DC voltage you read and the ohms match to the, across to the same temperature. Alright, so I started off with the evaporator, so the orange, we're at 30k ohms. If we go to our chart find around 30. We're still back here at that 33 degrees and we we're at like 2.7-ish DC volts. So we know that's pretty accurate. Now we're gonna do the black. All right, right here, this one's at 19 K ohms. Back up to our chart, we're at 19. So that puts it back at the 50, so all that seems pretty accurate. Here's that chart one more time. I know there's a little bit of a glare. So that kind of rules out if your sensors are bad or if the stepper motor is bad. One of the next steps is to make sure there's communication to your EEV board. 
So if you go to J2, you're going to put it on DC voltage. It should be close to 3 volts DC between the green wire and the white wire. So number 2 and number 3. If you have that, that's good. And then on the same J2 terminal, you do number 1 and number 4. So red and black. DC voltage should be around 13, 13, 8. So that's good. So that does mean that the board is attempting to talk to everything. Alright, one of the last steps to do to determine if this board's bad. So you would do the open and test with the plug in. If you jump open and test together, you should be able to put your hand on this motor and feel it open, like pulsate. If it does, it does mean the motor's working and this works as well and you do the close option as well to test it. Now that's kind of where it gets weird because now as soon as I plug the motor back in, it forces itself to close. And then that's where I don't get any 12 volt DC out of this plug here. So if you did all this test where it opens and closes, you ohmed out your sensors, you checked it here, and anytime you plug it back in and it just immediately closes, you would be able to see if you had your gauges on and just drops the suction pressure all the way down, we have a bad board. But that's how you test. If you got 46 ohms on the stepper motor, that's good. You ohm out your sensors and see if those are good. Make sure you're at least getting the proper DC voltages here for communication and then do the test. And if, depending what you find, will determine what's wrong. Or in my case, where you, everything else looked normal, but as soon as you plug it back in, it just closes itself and shuts it off so we have a bad board. Hope that helped.